So 30 years ago, I graduated here from Chico. I had a business degree, an accounting option. I kind of really didn't know where you know, my career was going to go, except I did know I was going to be an auditor you know, with, with PwC in Sacramento. So auditing was my least favorite class in accounting, by the way. You know? And it's like that way for probably a lot of people. You just know, you don't know what it's going to be like. But then when you do it, it's a lot better. And looking back at my career, you know, it was a lot more interesting. It's been a lot more interesting than I thought it was going to be. So here's my career on a slide. So companies across the top, kind of timeline across the middle, and positions held, and then some of the places I got to live along the way. So I graduated from Chico. I got pretty good grades. I sat for the CPA exam my last semester, passed the whole thing. I thought I was on pretty good track. So four months into my career, I get called into the senior partner's office, and he said, Mark, I'm hearing some reports. You don't want to work overtime. And I go, well, there was just a couple times where I had like plans. Uh, I think I was going to go skiing one weekend. I was going to meet up friends for drinks. And he said, you know, Mark, you know, when I was 18, I was racing my motorcycle here downtown Sacramento. And I got pulled over by a police officer. And he said, you know, you're not going to be around much longer if you keep riding your motorcycle that way. Mar Mark, you're up on that motorcycle right now. So. I'm sitting here thinking, I thought I was on a good track with my career, and now I'm on this track to be fired. So I took an immediate attitude adjustment, and that was a great teachable moment. Coaching at the right time, I made, I made a point to focus on that and took it off the table. It never was an issue again after that. It's all about attitude. And I tell you, three years later, I really wanted to go to Europe. And I asked the firm to support me, and they said, yeah, we would. Moved to Brussels, and great professional, personal choice. Uh, I mean, I'm glad I did it. I learned a lot, worked on very different clients in Sacramento, very international. And then after two years, I was looking to return to the US, and tech was starting to really boom. This was early 90s. I went to the San Jose practice and joined, and then made manager and then senior manager. And then I was ready to do something else. I'd spent nine years in public accounting. I mean, that's a fairly long career in public accounting if you're not going to be a partner. And I decided I wanted to join um, a company. So I joined as a head of revenue. Interesting job in that I get to work with sales guys on deal structures, which that's a lot better than you know, debits and credits and monthly closes. So I did that job after a year and a half. They said, Mark, do you want to go to Hong Kong, run all of finance for Asia? Uh, and I said, sure. I went there, great opportunity, got to be very operational, got to learn about special Asia unique business issues. I then joined Ariba, very hot e-commerce company at the time. They wanted me in Singapore. I did that. You know, dot coms were high, uh, things burst created an opportunity. They said, Mark, you want to take over all of international finance. You got to move to London. I did. Did that. And then I came back to the US after a couple of years and uh, joined Business Objects, another billion dollar software company, and then joined Informatica 12 years ago. And 12 years ago, Informatica, I said, they said, was a $200 million company uh, focused on one part of this, of the data issue, which uh, data solution, which was data integration, building these reporting data warehouses. So we made some great acquisitions. We came out with some great products. You know, data took off. Next thing you know, you know, social media, you know, all this data, big data was everywhere. They say like 90% of the world's data was created last two years. And it's going to keep going, and it's been doing this trend for a while. So we were in the right place, right time. We, we grow. Next thing, I got promoted a couple times, um, senior VP of finance, running this, this, the finance team. So what do I do? Build my team, attract, develop, retain. I've got teams in, in primarily Redwood City is the bulk of my team. I have 150 people, and I have teams in Europe, Asia, Latin America, trying to get them aligned with the business, how to partner with the business. So figuring out how to help grow revenue, but then you still got to be this policeman, so you got to find the balance. And the best finance guys know how to partner with the business better than their policemen. Policemen, internal controls, you know, uh, safeguard assets, saying no 
If you want a finance career, find out how to be more on the line toward partnering with the business. All the accounting transaction support for a billion dollar company, payroll, 30 countries, um, 3,500 people, closing the books every month, 70 entities, we do all that. Very much focus on process improvement and systems. It's all about systems. I thought, you know, in, in, I took one class, I think, on systems, but I spent a lot of my time on how to get orders from our opportunity sales, you know, Salesforce system, how to get those, those uh, into our ERP system so we could book orders and bill it, uh, how to do systems that when our sales guys travel, they can take a picture of their expense, rep uh, their expense uh, receipt and it goes into a system and they can get reimbursed so it's easy for them to do their business. I mean, how to scale. So one thing I learned at working at two, billion two companies that were a billion dollars, so when I got to a $200 million company is how to put systems that would scale and get us to that level. And then uh, compliance and controls. You just gotta do the tax returns and the payroll returns and all that right, that's a given. So lessons learned along the way. First thing to do, show commitment. If you don't bring your A game most of the time, someone else will. Uh, be coachable. You know, I came out of school, I think, knowing about this much of what I needed to know for my career. Almost everything is on the job training. If you're not coachable, you know, it's going to be hard out there. And your managers will like to develop you, so please let them. Um, find mentors. This has been brought up a couple times. This is key. You're going to come in times where your career, you're going to decide, should I take this lateral move within the company? Should I leave and take this opportunity? Mentors are going to help you sort through that. Too many people don't work with mentors and they make the wrong decisions that they regret. Um, strive to be a subject matter expert. Uh, if you're in sales, get enabled on that product and know what you're selling and figure out how to add value when you meet a, uh, a customer. If you're in accounting, learn that accounting system. If you're, you know, uh, you know, doing, if you're learning technical, uh, doing technical research, you know, figure out what the, you know, accounting standards, uh, you know, are. Figure out how you can add value and, and differ, differentiate yourself. You know, work for recognized companies. So I showed my companies I work for. They're kind of known in the, in the Bay Area. It's all about building my brand. Um, when we look for people that we recruit, we want people that have done it before, and they've worked for companies we admire. We're a billion dollar company. We want people that have done it for billion uh, you know, dollar companies or two billion dollar companies. So they can come and do you know, what they did for them, and do it for us. So uh, show career progression. You know, what we see is when I look at resumes, I'm looking for people that have, you know, been there long enough to get promoted. If you're somewhere and you left after 18 months, maybe you didn't get that promotion, you might string along a bunch of kind of lateral moves. You know, you, you're, you're kind of, uh, you know, hurting your career. Try to stay and get those promotions. Um, you know, it'll make you more marketable. Um, and decent tenure, you know, it doesn't have to be 10 years or 12 years. Maybe it's three years, maybe it's four years, but stay long enough to, to get some decent tenure. And then focus on people skills. When you start out, you gotta get along with your team and work cross-functionally. And then as you go up in your career, it's gonna be a lot more about how you manage people and build teams that people wanna work on, you know, work for. And then, you know, if you do all these things right, I think that one of the biggest factors in success is luck. If you do this, you'll be able to capitalize on that luck. Thank you.